YouTube, welcome back to Kind Heart Homestead. My name is Ben, and if you haven't been following our journey so far, we're a young family who just invested in property up in Virginia, about 10 acres, in hopes of moving off grid and starting a new homestead. We do have homesteading experience, but nothing in the sense of developing raw land. So I'm up here by myself. My goal this week is to excavate foundation for a shed. This is going to be a 12 foot by 20 foot shed, which is uh, going to house our solar components. And it's also going to have a bathroom and a larger just storage room in it. And this is a room, actually this is a building that we can use as we camp to basically be a permanent area for us to be able to lock and uh, obviously since it'll be housing our solar equipment we would be able to plug things directly into the building and kind of have a just a safer environment to house our electronics and recharge things and uh, power things as we need so as you can see here I have a pretty packed car even though I don't really need to transport camping equipment anymore because my shipping container has been delivered and I have access to all that stuff finally there was a sale at Lowe's. Actually, they gave me a, a coupon for, I believe, 10% off. So I went ahead and stocked up on plumbing supplies. The plumbing that'll go under the slab for the toilet and the shower and the sinks. And also, this is going to be a laundry room as well. So as we camp, we ideally would have access to do laundry. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. Stay tuned if you want to see work on these projects and uh, thanks all right I got to our site in Virginia I'm just doing some basic I guess you could call it housekeeping even though it, there's no house just moving the vehicles around putting tools in the truck getting the truck to the top of the hill and uh, just want to show you our chickens have been laying eggs that's a big pile I guess that means they're healthy. I was worried they'd be too stressed, but this is the chicken coop they probably remember. I don't know what the memory of a chicken is, but if they remember a couple months ago, they used to live in this structure. It has a solar powered door. It senses when it's light out and it only keeps the door open during daylight. And uh, they're used to that noise with the, it has like a, a threaded rod and goes and slowly raises and closes. It's kind of weird if you've never heard it before. But anyway, the chickens are doing well. I just wanted to show you a bit of what I do when I arrive on our off-grid property. Here you can see I show up with a full Prius and I basically just take everything out, get it staged, and then I can set up the camp and start putting things away. I have a shed to put some gear in. I have the shipping container, which is pretty full. A lot of the stuff I bring goes into the tent and then some of the materials that I bring goes under the shipping container to stay dry, but it's stuff that won't really get damaged in the weather. One tradition that I've developed over the last couple months of owning this property is that I never know when it's gonna rain, so I should go ahead and set up my tent as soon as I can, and uh, that way I can keep things dry if I need to. Hey everyone, I'm in my tent. There was no rain in the forecast, but there's raindrops happening. So I had to go ahead and put up the rain fly. This tent, I've had it for over 20 years. I actually have two of them. And I guess if I had to replace a part, 
I could just take it from the other tent. I brought both of them in the shipping container. I have all my camping gear. So now it's gonna be a bit more glamping than camping. Before I was just uh, using a borrowed tent, borrowed sleeping bags, and uh, now I have all of my cold weather gear. So, you know, down in South Carolina where I've been staying, it's hot, but here it's still cold. I'm expecting it to get down into the 30s this week while I'm here. So I get, I can still use my uh, winter gear. I have a zero degree down bag that I used in Yellowstone before. And that's what I'll use tonight. I just bought this Camp Chef outdoor three burner stove top thing at Costco. Basically, I'm getting tired of just cooking on the grill all the time, especially since I don't have refrigeration. Most things that I know of that can be grilled are meats and there's not really a grocery store nearby. So all I've been eating is eggs on a cast iron pan and that's fine, but I'd like a little more ingredients in my <laughs> meals. So uh, I'm gonna set this up and uh, we'll just see how it goes. This teapot is a bit too small for this burner. As you can see, the ring where the burner is is just as wide as the teapot, and it makes a lot of the heat just go around to the lid. And since I don't have a pot holder on me, I need to use my sleeve to hold this little rubberized handle. But even that handle was starting to melt, at least the orange coating on it was. So I need to look through our shipping container and get out our full-size teapot that we typically use in the kitchen. Well, it turns out this thing does have an auto ignite, but it was on the bottom of the knob and I didn't see it. There we go. I decided to cook some fajitas as the first meal on the stove top. Now that my shipping container is here, I have all of my power tools and everything that I need to do relatively small construction projects. Uh, I suppose if I wanted to do something heavy duty, I could fire up the generator to power my air compressor and then I could use my nail gun and things like that. But screws are fine for most projects. And uh, 
Now that I'm moving the camp up to where the shipping container is, I'd like to try to move this shed. So uh, behind me, I have a couple pressure treated four by four, eight foot long boards. And what I'd like to do is build skids. I believe that's the proper term. A lot of times if you get large construction material pallets delivered, they'll be delivered on skids. It'll basically be a pallet with two big blocks underneath so you can pull them around with a tractor. And uh, we did that with the chicken coop with good results. Instead of a skid, it was a heavy duty plastic pallet. But I think having four by fours under it permanently would protect the framing that I built for the platform of this shed. And I did use pressure treated materials there and that's fine, but they're only two by fours. So uh, it's not gonna keep it that high off the ground. And you can see here, I have some blocks under it. So it's actually gonna be pretty easy to install one of the two. So uh, let's get started and see how it goes. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but I used a square when I built this platform to trace lines on either side of every joist. And uh, that's a layout technique that framers do for their top and bottom plates. They'll put the plates next to each other, trace the line all the way across so both sides match. I did that with this, but just by accident, I happened to face those lines outwards instead of inwards. And uh, it actually helps with the framing because then you know where to put your fasteners through. You just center it between the two lines. So basically I'm going to transfer these lines down to the four x four. And that way I'll be able to notch out a space for every single joist. And you might think that's excessive. And unless I wanted to use hurricane ties, I think that's the best way to really anchor this thing onto the skids. And this will basically make it so every joist is gripped. And even without a fastener, if I'm pulling this thing with the truck or a tractor, all that grip is going to make it much stronger.
bought this steel tamping bar that has a point on one end and a round tamping iron on the other end for a fence project a few years ago. And it's actually a very valuable tool for anything that requires leverage. It's so heavy that a lot of times, as long as you put a pivot point close enough to something heavy, the weight of the bar itself can lift it up. In this case, the shed was pretty well built and pretty heavy, so I need to kind of sit on it or stand on it with one foot. But as you can see here, as long as I get a small little block of wood or a stick or any number of things close enough, I can lift it up and put the skids underneath. I have a bunch of these toe straps and ratchet straps and chains around, and uh, I was hoping I could pull this around with the pickup truck. But I think because there's nothing in the truck bed to weigh it down, I lose traction. So I'm gonna have to get the beefy chains out and hook it up to the tractor while I have it rented. This is the biggest chain they sell at Harbor Freight, and the capacity should be plenty to just pull this shed around the property. So during this trip so far, you've seen me set up camp, get my new outdoor kitchen set up, and move the shed. But the next video will focus on the actual groundbreaking for the, uh, the new shed that I'm planning to build, which will have a concrete slab and a concrete footing, plumbing pipes underneath, insulation. Uh, so this is going to be a new series that I'm kicking off, and if you want to Stay up to date with what we're working on. Please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. I'll see you next time at Kind Heart Homestead.